So what was it that made that switch a realization? Because you said this was of the last three years that you really feel like you made the switch. Mm -hmm. So was it a specific moment or a rock bottom or was it, what was it that kind of really shifted you? So I think that it was a lot of bad tasting medicine that the patient needed. And I think that I felt like I had gotten to a point in my life that I had reached that plane where I was like, oh, I'm healed and things are good and whatever, but it was circumstantial. And then when COVID happened and I felt very isolated, I was single during the time. I, I was in a weird workplace in my life. Like all these other things that I had placed my worth and self-value in dissipated. And again, I don't, I don't mean to say why me, because everyone had a hard time during COVID people. A lot of people died during COVID. I totally get that. But it was very isolating. And I, like I said, I'm mentally ill. I had something I'll deal with for the rest of my life. I'm lucky that it's been very managed and I have resources, but at the time wasn't in therapy. I was off my medication, just all these different things. And it pushed me into this really dark phase of my life that was really sink or swim in a way that I hadn't experienced since my mom died. And so I basically really sat with it and was like, do you want to be happy and live your best life? Or do you want to tap out? Because that's where you're at. Either you off yourself or you go forward from this place and you don't come back here and you are reborn into like this new version of you. So those are your choices. Yes, what happened is awful. What happened to your mother is fucking awful. What happened to you here, here, and here, that was fucking awful. That is not in your control. What is in your control is how you react to it and how much longer do you want the narrative and your entire personality to be the death of your mom? Because I realized I would be like, hi, my name, my name is Dana. My mom's dead. Not, hi, my name's Dana. I love sharks. I have these interests. I just started doing tennis. I like stand-up comedy. I love my friends. I love Olive Garden. I love this, that, and the other. Like, like I just realized I had hid behind her dying in such a big way that didn't allow space for anything positive, anything real, anything past her. Because I think now looking back, I didn't want to get past her because then she's really dead. And that all really happened. And so it was just myself being, getting in my own way, as my therapist would say. Yeah, that, that's it. What you just said, I don't know why that hit me, hit me so hard, was once you get over it, then it makes it, and then she's dead. Then it's over. But isn't that weird? It's like we know we know that's done, but until you get over it, that that's that. I mean, you said so many. God, you speak so elegantly. This is, you speak so clearly. That I don't know. Out of everything you just said, that just hit me the most in regards to like. It's that. It's it's the hanging on. It's the holding on to that luggage and not letting go. Well, my mom. Something that really plagued me for a long time too. My mom died worried about me. One of the last cognitive moments she had, and I know this, she told my sister, she's, I'm worried about Dana because I had had these issues with depression and other things growing up. And she had seen that. And she was like, basically saying like, I don't know if she's going to pull through. Like, I know how much she depends on me. And, you know, Brittany, you're going to be fine. Like, I know that you're going to be okay, but I'm worried about Dana. And that fucking crushed me for so long. But like, my mom fully died worried about me. <laughs> <laughs> 